a Plaguelands Media production. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Hugh from Plaguelands Media bringing you another book review today. One moment, please. Very saffonsifying, I must admit. Now, today I'm bringing you an older novel. This is The Hunter by Richard Stark. Richard Stark, of course, is a pseudonym for Donald E. Westlake. This is the first of the Parker novels. Uh, this book was written in 1962. It has uh, since been adapted into two films, uh, Point Blank, in 1967 starring Lee Marvin and if you don't know who Lee Marvin is well he's this guy uh, what the hell is going on in my town we're just painting this wagon you got a problem with that as a matter of fact I do you missed a spot well grab a brush and join in Gonna paint your wagon, gonna paint it fine, gonna use oil-based paint, cause the wood is pie. And more recently, well, I say more recently, 1999, uh, recent for me because I'm an old shit, um, Payback, starring Mel Gibson. Uh, for those of you who don't know Mel Gibson, he is this guy. I'm not licked, and I'm gonna stay right here and fight for this lost cause. Somebody will listen to me. Somebody will. I believe the senator has yielded the floor. <laughs> Yield this, Senator Payne. Now, what is interesting about the main character of this novel, Parker, is uh, that he's completely reprehensible. He is an asshole basically through the entire book and he's the one that we should be following. Now, this kind of reminded me a lot of uh, the Stephen King novel, The Dark Half. Now, what I mean by that is Donald E. Westlake used the pseudonym Richard Stark for um, these books with the character of Parker being the main character and he is a thug, he is a bully, he's a murderer, he's a thief. He really has no positive qualities about him. In The Dark Half, uh, the main character writes trashy novels, very similar in vain to uh, this style of writing. Uh, the main character, Machine, um, is the same sort of a character. And in that book, the pseudonym the author uses is George Stark, which is not a coincidence, I'm sure. I'm sure Stephen King did that deliberately as an homage to the Parker character and to... Uh, Richard Stark or Donald E. Westlake. This is going to be a spoiler field review, so if you want to know what I thought of it, skip right to the very end. Otherwise, join me for the next episode of... So the novel starts with uh, Parker walking across the Brooklyn Bridge in the rain, just in a foul mood. He's on the way to uh, kind of perpetuate a scam to get some money because he's got no cash on him or anything. And he's going to do this by faking a driver's license and then going around to different banks and trying to find... Uh, someone with a similar name that has an account there and just taking all the money out of the account. He is ultimately successful after the fourth attempt. So he gets a bit of cash on him. Um, buys some clothes, buys some stuff. We really don't know who he is at this point in the book. And uh, he ultimately gets a fancy hotel room and a prostitute, which he proceeds to beat up for some reason. He then decides to pay a visit to a woman called Lynn, Lynn is quite shocked to see him, but he busts into her place and they proceed to kind of have it out back and forth. And we realize that Lynn in the past kind of uh, double crossed him 
in some way, but we don't exactly know how. And he's looking for a guy named Mal, who was shacked up with Lynn for a while, but then kind of left her there. He basically lets, Mal lets Lynn live in this apartment and is paying her $1,000 a month that is delivered by courier. Um, we find out that Lynn is on depressants and ultimately, ultimately through the course of this, we also discover that Lynn is Parker's ex-wife who uh, double-crossed him and is deathly frightened of him, of what he could do. She honestly thought that he was dead and now he's back from the dead. He decides to stay there. Um... And when the courier comes with the $1,000 the first, on the first day of the month, he is going to take that money and try and work out how to get back at Mal. He thinks Mal was behind the whole double cross. Lynn ultimately ends up killing herself, uh, overdosing on pills. Um, Parker takes her body and dumps it in Central Park. The courier comes, Parker kind of kidnaps him and gets a name from him, this, this guy called Stegman who runs a taxi company, and the courier doesn't know anything. It's a different courier every time, and this guy doesn't know, like, what the fuck is going on. Parker tracks down Stegman, uh, goes for a ride to try and get uh, the location of Mal. Stegman has no idea where Mal is hiding. Uh, we then switch to... Uh, Parker obviously threatens Stegman, saying, if you tip Mal off, I'll come back and I'll kill you. Um, which Stegman actually believes. We then, the story then flips over to Mal. We find out exactly what the double cross was. Mal was working for an organization called the Syndicate, which is now the outfit. They're like the mafia around America. And Mal fucked up a job and owed them a lot of money. Uh, he basically panicked and dumped a bunch of drugs he was supposed to um, kind of courier. So Mal, looking for a quick, uh, quick fix of money, hears about this job, gun running, um, weapons from uh, the United States into Canada, and then flying them to an island where they're picked up by South American guerrilla fighters. And the job pays about $90,000. He gets in on this job, and uh, just by happenstance, he's driving a taxi and happens to pick up Parker and his wife, Lynn, they had met before. Parker had done jobs, uh, a job with him in the past. Parker's whole thing in this book is that he is uh, a bank robber. He does one or two jobs a year and then kind of lives off the money for a year. And then he goes back and does one or two jobs a year and kind of goes back and forth. So Parker agrees to uh, do this job for the giant score. He's down to about his last $2,000. And uh, he gets a couple of his friends in to kind of work with him. And uh, this man named Chester, who's setting the whole thing up. So you have Styles and Ryan, uh, Chester, Parker and Lynn are kind of in here. They plan everything out. Um, they eventually go and do the heist. The heist goes smoothly. At this point, Parker has decided he's going to kill Mal because Mal is a coward and a fuck up. But Mal decides to double cross Parker by using his wife, Lynn. Uh, is cajoled into killing Parker after they've had sex. And what ultimately happens is uh, Lynn doesn't want to die, so she decides, okay, I'm going to do this. Ryan and Mal kind of give her a gun and tell her, you've got to shoot him. Parker is off to kill Mal. When Lynn calls uh, his name out, he turns around and she fires six bullets into him. Only one of them hits him, hits his belt buckle, and as he's falling down, the others go over. Um, Mal, at this point, takes Lynn and decides, let's just burn the house down, and all the other people, uh, Styles is dead, um, Chester is dead, and... As, uh, as he's leaving, Mal also kills Ryan, so it's just him and Lynn. He takes all of the money, pays back the syndicate, becomes part of the, the syndicate or the outfit, as they're now known again, and is living with Lynn, but Lynn is kind of having nothing of it. She's really disgusted by what has happened. So this is all told in like this one big flashback sequence, and Mal uh, now discovers that 
someone is out to get him, but he doesn't know who. He goes to the head of the outfit um, and uh, a man named Carter. There are two uh, heads of the outfit, Carter and Fairfax. He sees Carter and he explains the situation. He kind of realizes that it's Parker at this point and Carter is like, fix your own shit up. Um, and while you're there, distance yourself from the outfit until you've got this done, which um, he does. Parker um, finds an old acquaintance of his and manages to get Mal's um, address where he's staying. First, the outfit that the hotel runs, and then the outfit, uh, the hotel that he's actually staying at. And he goes there and he tracks down Mal uh, to get uh, his half of the money back. That's all he wants. He's going to kill Mal, but he wants his half of the money. He ends up killing Mal anyway. And then he goes to Carter, the head of the syndicate, and says, listen, he paid you this money, half of it is mine, I want it back. And Carter's like, no fucking way. Uh, he gets on the, Carter gets on the phone to the syndicate's kind of big, big boss. And while he's on the phone, um, Parker talks to this big boss guy and says, listen, if you don't give me the money, I'm going to kill Carter. The big boss like, you're bluffing, and he kills Carter. He then tracks down Fairfax and uh, kind of does the same thing. And the syndicate big boss basically says, all right, and uh, Parker lays out a plan to, um, you know, deliver, drop the money here and we'll kind of get it all, all worked out. At this point, um, the drop has been arranged. He goes back and finds Stegman, the cab, the, the taxi cab guy, and kills him for double crossing him. Goes, gets his money, gets away from the outfit guys. Goes and stays in a fancy hotel for the night before his plans to fly over and get some plastic surgery because people are going to come gunning for him. He's going to change his face and get back to doing his bank jobs and shit like that. As he's leaving the hotel, he uh, is accosted by two uh, detectives who take him into the back room. At this point, he's got two bags. He's got his clothing bag briefcase and his money briefcase with the $45,000 in it. They interrogate him over... Uh, an incident that happened in a bodega um, earlier in the book that seemed inconsequential at the time. Uh, at this point, he kind of uh, says, fuck this, I'm out of here. He headbutts one of the detectives, grabs the briefcase, and fucks off. It's not until he gets into the cab to go to the train station that he realizes he grabbed the wrong briefcase. The cops have the $45,000, and he has his clothes, and he's back to square one and uh the book ends with him kind of debating where he's going to go and how he's going to get there and whether or not he's going to have enough money for the plastic surgery that he needs all in all a grossly entertaining novel i absolutely loved every minute of it however uh there wasn't a part of this novel where i felt parker was in danger at any time um, I'm sure, I mean, there are so many of these novels. I mean, uh, just on this, uh, books by Richard Stark. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There's just 26, uh, books that he's written for the Parker novels, um, on here alone. And the next book in the series is The Man with the Getaway Face which I'm very much looking forward to. Very well written, a lot of fun if you just want a gritty, urban noir style revenge story. That is Richard Stark's The Hunter. Highly recommend this one. Thank you very much for watching and drinking along if you are. But please everyone, Stay safe, have a fantastic rest of your day, and of course, read a fucking book, people.